this video, we will be taking a look at problem 1.10 from Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, third edition. This problem tells us to consider the first 25 digits of pi. So 3.14159265, all that. And then part A says, if you selected one of those digits at random, what are the probabilities of getting each of the 10 digits? So zero through nine. Uh, what's the most probable digit? What's the median digit? What's the average value? And then part C, what's the standard deviation? So for part A, uh, let's just go ahead and make a table here and make my pen a little bit bigger. So for this table, we're going to have three different columns. Integer, so zero through nine. Number of occurrences, uh, so that's how many times does that digit come up. And then the probability is just going to be out of 25. Well, the, it's going to be the number of occurrences out of 25, um, which is the total number of digits that we're considering here. Uh, and I misspelled that probability. There we go. And let's just go ahead and fill in the rest of this here. Perfect. So integer, let's just fill that in. 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 number of occurrences. So how many times does zero occur? Well, actually, uh, zero, right? So zero occurrences there. How many times does the digit one occur? Well, that's going to be actually two times. We have two instances of the digit one. How many instances of the digit two? We have three of those. Uh, five instances of three. And then we have for four, five, and six, we have three instances each. And then for seven, eight, nine, we have one, two, and three instances respectively. How many occurrences is that? Well, or what's the probability rather? Zero out of 25, two out of 25, which would be 8%, three out of 25, which would be 12%, five out of 25, which is 20%, three out of 25, three out of 25. And yeah, I could be, um, uh, you know, writing this as percentages. I'm gonna keep it all out of 25 because then it's easier to uh, compare relative probabilities among all the different numbers if they're the same denominator as one another. So that is part A. Uh, these are the occurrences and the probabilities of, of getting each of these digits if we just picked one at random. Part B, what's the most probable digit? Well, what's the most probable is pretty obvious if you look at the table. Right, number three has five instances. It's got a 20% probability. So most probable digit, uh, most probable is going to be three with a 20% or 0 0.2 probability. All right, and then what's the median digit? So the median digit is going to take uh, slightly more effort than uh, the most probable one. So what we have to do is we have to figure out, okay, there's 25 digits and we have to determine, okay, the, the number of, uh, we need to figure out essentially what is the 13th occurrence if we go from, from this way to this way. And so the way that I'm going to do that is essentially I'm just going to um, make tick marks here. So there's no occurrences of zero. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the 13th occurrence happens on the digit four. Okay, and let's try and make this more clear. So the 13th occurrence out of 25 occurs right here on that digit four. And then if we keep going, we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So essentially, if we are looking this direction, we get 12 digits going this way, and we get 12 digits going this way. So that's the median digit. We've, we've ordered all of our digits from least to greatest, from zero to nine, and we want to know where is the, the middle occurrence, right? So that's number four. Number four. And then we want to know what's the average value. So average value is a simple enough calculation that isn't really worth doing. So essentially, right, just take your average value. Um, you have uh, 25 uh, values total. You have to do the integer one has two occurrences, the integer two has three occurrences, and so on. 
essentially just calculate your average value, you're going to get 4.72 for that. 4.72. Part C just asks to find the standard deviation for the distribution. So this is the general formula for finding a standard deviation. You're going to have the square root of the expectation value of j squared, or the average value of j squared, minus average value of j quantity squared. And so, what is this J? J is uh, referring to the digit uh, that we're discussing. So up here we have nine digits. So we have nine different, um, uh, essentially, we're referring to those digits when we talk about these J values. And so what is J squared? Well, it's gonna be kind of a, a long calculation, but I can breeze through it pretty quick. So J squared is essentially, we're gonna take zero, we're gonna take the digit square square that and then we're going to multiply it by the number of occurrences so this one's trivial but they're zero we're going to square that and it has zero occurrences so we multiply it by zero very trivial but what's the next one well, we're going to take one that's the next digit we're going to square it we're going to multiply it by the number of occurrences which was two plus the next digit two squared multiply it by number of occurrences which was three plus three squared which occurred five times plus four squared, which occurred three times, same thing with five squared, and six squared, also three times each, plus seven squared, which occurred only one time, plus eight squared, which occurred two times, plus nine squared, which occurred uh, three times. And you're gonna divide that by 25 because there were a total of 25 digits um, in, the, in that expansion of pi. And what you are left with, and once again, not really worth showing the rest of the math there, but you are left with 28.4. And so that's your J squared, your expectation value of J squared rather. Okay. What is this part then? Expectation value of J quantity squared. Well, and that is actually just your average value, but then we need to square it. So what this is saying then is that J is really equal to 4.72. So then if you want to square it, then there you go, 4.72 squared. And so what does that mean when you're calculating standard deviation? Well, you just plug that into the formula, square root 28.4. Uh, common mistake is to then go ahead and square this, but remember, we already squared it. That's what this whole part was, so don't square it again. Uh, we just have 28.4 minus 4.72 squared. And that final answer comes out to 2.47. So sigma equals 2.47. And that's your final answer.